never stop casting. Chase the Dream. Welcome to Season 5 of Musky Mastery Outdoors. Brought to you by Joe Booker Outdoors. Number one in big game fish products. And by Recon Boats. Made by craftsmen. Built for fishermen. Hey everybody, welcome back to another Muskie segment here on the Muskie Mastery YouTube channel. Welcome to another educational whiteboard vlog segment. Get the notebooks out, get the pens and pencils, get the highlighters, maybe even get the flashcards. I don't know. Class is in session and I have a fantastic topic for you in this vlog segment. And this is brought to you by a fellow subscriber, a fellow Muskie Master reviewer named John. And John wrote in, Chas, could you please do a deep dive into the micro details of how you would fish a neck down with current? John goes on to talk about a number of things. He wants to know about wind direction. Does wind direction affect a current neck down? Wind speed? wants to talk about you know, what is an eddy, do sun angles affect this, and how would you fish this? Does current direction affect this kind of neck down? This is a fantastic topic. This is definitely a topic that if you want more of this, leave the comments down below. Let me know if you want a part two, part three. This is going to be an introductory um, take on current and neck downs. Those of you who are watching, who are experts, uh, you know, expert river anglers and uh, flowage anglers, you may know lots about this, but I'm going to give you my take. And if you're new to muskie angling, or if current just hasn't been your cup of tea lately, this, this video is for you. So we're going to dive in, and we're going to start with a very uh, fundamental, you know, place, okay? And that is just very simply, what is current? And my definition, although you, you could Google this, but you're here with me, and my definition of current is very simple. It is just uh, the, the, the movement of water from one place to another. It is a natural occurrence in rivers uh, and in flowages. Flowages are, um, you know, I would, I would define a flowage as a, it's part of a river system that has been dammed up. And because the dams have been put in place, sometimes, uh, you know, man-made, or human-made, and sometimes just natural dams, uh, they have created bigger lakes where the water has flooded out. But still, in flowages, you find uh, you, you will have sometimes uh, a little current and sometimes a lot of current. In rivers, this also, you, you might have lots of current, and this is very dependent on uh, the time of the year with uh, rainfall and precipitation amounts and um, all sorts of other factors from different tributaries emptying in to or exiting out of rivers and flowages. But basically, we can get so carried away with this right now and we don't really need to because we're interested in talking about muskies. But current is the flow or movement of water from one place to another, from one place to another. And you can see here in my little diagram, my, my very beautiful Bob Ross here, um, we're just going to say that this, this uh, nice purple line here with the arrow, this, uh, for, for my physicists out there, my, my vector here, although this is kind of curved, but it's, yeah, anyway, we won't get into physics right now. Um, but yeah, here's, here, is my, here is my current moving through the neck down here um, from top to bottom, and that's basically it. Now, that's great. You're saying, Chaz, wonderful current, current, you know, why, why should I even care? Well, and well, first of all, this is beautiful. I, I have a lot of fantastic kind of structural elements here, but why is, why is current important for locating and catching muskies? Well, first of all, you know, without getting into the, like, the biological realm of things, muskies are a, a, a uh, you know, let's just call them a, they're a river fish. Muskies are at home in current, first of all. But there's something more important to, to current than that. Um, now, of course, you, you might say, well, Chaz, you know, our muskies, you know, muskies are pretty much everywhere, right? You know, you can, you can take any lake, river, uh, you know, flowage, you name it. There's going to be fish all over the place. But there is something to be said about the old statement that 80% um, of the fish, you know, are in 20% of the water. Something like that, whatever, whatever it is. And there is some truth to that, that, you know, although we, we could say that, that muskies do exist uh, just about everywhere and anywhere where, you know, in, in some lake or reservoir where they're found, um, you know, that there are certain places that, that will hold more of them. There are certain, 
lakes and certain places within lakes or reservoirs or flowages or rivers that, that just hold more muskies. And this is, this is um, seasonal. This, this is time of year dependent. Okay, this changes, but we're gonna get, this is introductory today. And um, I should have mentioned, we talked about rivers and flowages. Do, um, do lakes, do, do lakes have actual currents? I'm not talking about wind surface currents, I'm talking about current. Uh, yeah, if you're on a lake and you have um, either an inflow or an outflow from some other stream or river, you can have situational currents in, in, in areas um, on a lake. Not as much as you might have in a flowage. But anyway, so get back to the question, you know, why is, why is you know, current important for locating and catching muskies? Well, if one of the first things that, that I've come across in my experience is that current draws fish in, okay? So I'm going to mark a, a school of bait here, whether, whatever this is. These are maybe, um, you know, shiners or you know, whatever whatever these are okay these could these could be panfish schools of panfish here or something like that right so we have like you know schools of bait that oftentimes you know suspend and this doesn't need to be in 25 or 50 or 60 feet of water but a lot of times we have we have bait okay that that is out more in the open for whatever reason you know it could be over some deep cribs or whatnot um, could be crappies or certain panfish and, and things like that but bait will oftentimes, and, and muskies, will congregate in these, you know, deeper water areas. And muskies will suspend all year long from, you know, before the spawn to after the spawn and all year. Some muskies, in the words of Tom Gelb, one of our, one of our, one of our all-time greats, big muskies eat, live, and die in deep water, and some of them never even see a lure. But back to my point here, current has has a tendency in in again in my experience to to draw bait into the current okay for whatever reason this this could be um this could be that uh you know for for feeding this could be for um you know all sorts of reasons such as uh um you know energy um consumption issues you know you know fish don't want to over um overdo it with regard to utilizing their energy. They're cold-blooded. Uh, so, you know, they don't want to be using too much energy when they don't need to. So they may, they may find their way into these neck downs when current is heavier, okay? And, and that's kind of funny because you might say, well, why would you go into, when, if you have current, why would you go into an area where, where there may be heavier current produced because of water flow? And that's precisely it. These fish will, instead of fighting a constant current out here in the in the open basin or areas around a neck down i think they they tend to um locate themselves and again this this may be from an energy standpoint energy conservation standpoint this also is very likely and now we're just talking about the bait fish we're talking about the prey items this could be from a feeding standpoint zooplankton and all sorts of uh little things that these um this this whatever prey species this might be may they, they may find it easier to feed on those prey items in these neck down regions that that is one of my theories and with that again you're going to you're going to have muskies move in and follow again you know it's just very simple you know muskies will follow their food source muskies are going to follow their food source right into um the, these tight these tighter areas where we've got we've got a lot of current and again we're going to get to eddies we're going to get to you know the slower moving areas uh with regard to current within neck downs but that's one of the biggest things here just big takeaways you know why is current important i think that it again i like to use the word corrals it brings everything together um my, my good friend uh, and fishing partner joe booker and i you know learned about this you know i learned about this from joe i should say many years ago fishing Lake of the Woods. And, and when there was major current on Lake of the Woods, we found that, that neck downs and, and tight and, and tighter areas would hold lots of muskies. And I've since, you know, utilized this on the flowages that I fish in northern Wisconsin. Um, for whatever reason it is, you know, for, we don't even need to get into the biological reasons. Muskies tend to congregate in and around tight neck down areas when we have lots of current. So that's a 
that's a big thing. Current and neck down areas, and your current's gonna be strongest when it gets pushed through a bottleneck, like I've, like I've kind of depicted here. So that, that's pretty important. And I, I think it again, it, you know, muskies will suspend all year long, okay? And I think that again, the, the, the big idea here is that when we have current, and we have more current than maybe usual, muskies will gravitate toward that current. I think because not that, not that muskies like to work harder to, to, uh, you know, to, to um, you know, keep themselves wherever they want to be, but because they're chasing food. And so there's obviously some connection um, when we have, you know, more intense periods of current, when, you know, muskies will go find themselves in these neck downs and these, these uh, you know, more intense current areas. So there's obviously a food situation going on there, and I think that's probably the biggest part of it. But we don't need to go into it that much more in detail. But again, it pulls in suspended muskies, so that's really cool. It's a very predictable um, way to find muskies. Um, so if you've got current and you've got neck downs and you've got tighter areas on your flowage, it doesn't even need to be this extreme. It could be maybe a little bigger. Maybe, maybe it's under everybody's nose and they don't even know it's there, but these are anyway areas um, that, uh, you know, kind of smush the water in and, and, and create areas of higher current when you've got water flow. So that's kind of cool. Now, this is pretty obvious, but I made a point here in my notes, um, where to look for current, okay? Because you might be wondering, well, you know, do I, you know, what, where, how do I, how do I know when, when current is forming? Well, first of all, you should do a little bit of research and figure out, you know, if you're not on a river system and you're on a flowage, you know, if you're on a flowage, I mean, you, there, there is definitely some sort of dam or, uh, you know, man-made structure to, to impede the flow of water. If you do have a dam, and I mentioned this in the last whiteboard vlog, go, go talk to these folks, go talk to these biologists or, or engineers that run this, you know, run the lock system. I know they would be happy to tell you, uh, you know, they, they a lot of times have a schedule for when the dams open and close, and a lot of times, obviously, it's it's based on other things. Um, in some of the flowages that that uh, I have fished, um, they're connected to hydroelectric power plants. Uh, actually, in fact, a lot of them are. So the the uh, the water level is regulated by dams, and uh, a lot of times there's a schedule. There's usually always some water flow, but in times of my, my next uh, you know wait, um, bullet point here is rain. When you have a lot of rain, the dams will open and you will get lots of flow in these neck downs. So, so rain is a humongous indicator of not only just current. You know a lot of you know flow. All flowages have current, but when it rains, you're going to have more current and it makes these neck down areas super super important to go keying on. Um, of course, you know. Where do I look for current? I look for, you know, current, of course, in neck downs. That's the whole picture here. But there's, but there's different areas to pick apart within a neck down. Um, and we're gonna talk about those, but I, but I have this in my notes. You know, I'm looking for, you know, deep trenches. Now, a lot of times deep trenches can be found in the actual neck down itself. Um, but a lot of times these are found kind of on the, on the turns where that, where that current is kind of, um, you know, passing through. Maybe that's, you know, you know, that's, that's where the old river channel was in a flowage. Maybe that's actually where the water is flowing in a river or whatever that is. But I'm looking for like those deep channels, irregularities in the contour of that, that, you know, that lake bed here. That's that, you know, I'm looking for irregularities, whether that's, that's points here. We're going to talk about this inside turn here. That's an important part there. Or, uh, you know, this deadfall or these stumps. These are all important parts, to, you know, of the of the picture to think about. Um, the other thing again that, I, that I'm looking for as far as like you know where do you look for for uh, current bridges. That's a classic. Anytime you have a bridge, you probably have a neck down. Not all the time, not all the time, because there's plenty of bridges that I know of in northern Wisconsin that are built you know not on neck downs, but there's a lot of bridges, small bridges that are built. Um, where, where we have land that kind of comes together. So that's really cool. Now, so there's all sorts of ways, you know, to look for current. I think the biggest one that I highlighted on here was just rain and neck downs. Rain and neck downs is probably the easiest way to find current areas. Um, so, and, and, you know, some of the, and, and I guess one of the other things that I, I didn't mention in here, um, it's got to be in my notes somewhere, um, 
How to detect current. Oh, that's the next topic. How to detect current. Well, this is actually, there are some tricks to this. So first of all, you can visually see water moving. That's an obvious one. But in most circumstances, even when there's, when there's a decent um, flow of water, you can't actually detect current. Uh, so one way that I do it, and it's just, it's very subtle, or where we have slow and awake buoys or navigational buoys, okay? When these buoys are sitting, you know, no, I don't know. We'll just, let's say this is a slow and awake buoy. This is tr traditional. And when you've got a little bit of current, you will see them angled to the side. And in, in addition to that, when you're looking at these buoys, you will see just a ever so slightest ripple forming around the buoy. I'm always looking for that when I'm fishing flowages. I'm going to look at the buoys. Uh, I'm going to try to see if they're kind of laying down a little bit. Same is said for uh, grasses, reeds, different types of... Uh, submergent and emergent cover. Um, you will see um, certain grasses lay down um, and they'll literally lay down on the, on, the, on the surface or just under the surface. And if you're looking at those, you can pretty easily detect, okay, is there current in here? Um, if, they're, if they're all strewn about, um, you know, more in a 360 degree type of a situation, maybe there's not a lot of current going on, but if they're all kind of like pushed down in the same direction, you probably have some current present and that's really important to key in on. Um, and that may be an area that we want to check for muskies, okay? Um, tree branches, a lot of time tree branches, you will see debris hanging on tree branches and you'll see whatever foliage or vegetation or if it's a, you know, whatever it is, it could be even a, you know, you name it, um, you know, some sort of trash even, which we hate to see and we should pick that up. <laughs> but anyway, you can see these things hanging off of tree branches. And, um, you know, that's just a couple of the things that I'm looking at. How do you detect it? I mean, uh, you can obviously, you know, if you, if you put your boat in park and you start moving, you've got current. So again, obviously, uh, anglers that fish river systems, there is some extreme current. But even in flowages, you know, it, it's a little more subtle, but it's very important to key in on. Sometimes, again, like I said, rain and in other situations like that are really important for kind of detecting current, okay? But these are all, you know, some just some basic things here. Now, how to fish neck down areas. So first of all, I think that I think that we've made it pretty clear so far in this video that neck downs are important. Um, again, they, they funnel water into a tighter zone here. It creates a more, um, a more dramatic flow of that water. And um, I think that's, again, it just in summation here, why these fish are pulled into these areas. And, um, you know, areas that I'm really looking to focus on are, are really, you know, I, and I guess when, when you've got a current zone here, this is going to sound kind of... Um, you know, pretty lackluster with regard to like some special, special tactic here. But I, I would, you know, if I look at this, I mean, at this whole area, this whole area is, is in focus for me. But yeah, I guess we can dive in a little bit more. Anytime you have stumps, okay, anytime you have some kind of uh, blocking uh, system, okay, this, these stumps here are, maybe I'll use a different color here. These are these are um, providing a, a slow current area here, okay? So see what I mean? The, the water is hitting these stumps and it pr and provides an area of protection here. Same goes for behind this. So I'll just say this is a, this is what we would call, or maybe a version of an eddy, okay? And I'm gonna define eddy and well, maybe we'll just define an eddy now. An eddy is, is typically defined as an area of slower moving water adjacent to faster moving water. So, of course, I'm looking for bridge pilings and deadfalls and stumps because they, they stop the current. And these are excellent areas where you're gonna have a couple things happening. One, you're gonna have whatever prey items, or, you know, prey species you have hiding out there, they're gonna, they're gonna hang in these little protected areas, okay? But you're also, of course, gonna have muskies laying an ambush in eddies. So again, eddies are, eddies could be found here. Here is an inside turn, here is an inside turn. Now, could a muskie be 
hanging on this point, of course. But I have found, in fact, I caught my biggest Wisconsin muskie to date, a 51 inch behemoth on a top raider on an eddy just, just on the, the outskirts of town on a, uh, in a, in a neck down area during during a, a very rainy time so these neck down areas and then again in addition to that the eddies can be fantastic areas to locate muskies um, abrupt contour changes uh, and again like I said a lot of times these these middle areas can be pretty deep sometimes they can be pretty shallow um, these areas like right here this this deep water right here anytime we've got this real steep contour area here this is definitely a go-to for me, especially in the fall. Especially in the fall. Talk about working suckers on this steep brake line. That is fantastic. But again, I'm looking for points and inside turns. And even, even more basically than that, I'm just looking to work the, the channel mouth in general. I am going to, and that's why I said, you know, I'll work this whole thing. I'm going to work this side. I'm going to work this side. I'm going to work this side and this side. Um, now, you know, so I'm really going to try, if, I, if I'm confident there's muskies or I'm confident, if I have a lot of current, I'm going to, I'm going to try to work this entire thing. It's, it's, um, it's tough to say. Some of this comes from, and, and you, uh, those of you who have, you know, fished a lot of new water, some of this just comes from experience. Some of this comes from, you know, if I'm looking at this, which side of the channel mouth would you attack? Would you attack, you know, attack the area where the, where the water's coming in? Would you attack the area where water's coming out? Some of that can't be answered until you go drive around. There's not, I can't provide an answer for that specifically. You may have to go do some scouting. You may have to go uh, do some fishing for, you know, prey, prey species. You may have to go fish for walleyes, fish for perch, fish for crappies that might be suspended or in and around some, some deadfalls or cribs or what have you. You may have to go use those, you know, th those electronics you've, you've, uh, you've invested in and go, look, use your side imaging. Use your 2D sonar. Go to go take a look at this, okay? Um, and of course, you know if you've got—I didn't draw this in here—but you know, of course, if you've got, um, let's just let's just in place in in these eddies that I've drawn in here, these areas of like slower current that are just protected. If you've got you know something specific here, let's say you've got like a you know a little a little uh, you know real thin. A lot of times, I find in in current areas these. These weed lines are real thin and kind of close to the uh, close to the banks. If you've got like a weed um, a weed bed or kind of a you know a little bit of a weed edge on on one side, I mean maybe that's a starting point. But again, like I said, you got to use your electronics. You got to kind of take a peek and uh, see if you can either locate a fish. Um, and some some people and, and I've had success doing this like to start right in the middle. You know, start right in the narrowest area and work your way out. Um, a lot of times, and this is going to come up, well, you know, how do you like to fish this? A lot of times I will, I will work, I, I've, I've done this so many different ways. I will work into the current, especially if I have wind blowing in my face. Um, I will work, I will work um, with the current if I have wind blowing into my face. Sometimes uh, if I'm dragging live bait or if I'm maneuvering live bait, I will a lot of times go with the current for a more natural presentation. So much to be said here as far as how you how you attack these these areas. Um, I guess the number one thing, and I guess so. I guess we should probably I, I, maybe I'll talk about this a little bit more. Um, one of the what have I talked about here? I've talked about bridge pilings, contour changes, points inside turns. Okay, cool. So, casting and trolling. One thing that I definitely want to bring up here, so I'm sorry, I'm looking through my notes here. One thing I definitely want to bring up is, you know, with regard to locating fish, and this is something I have, I have a, um, I have a big, a big, like, asterisk by this, okay? This is very unique as far as, you know, we're talking how to fish them and, and overall ideas here. Current areas, in my humble opinion, the best ones, seem to draw fish in, and by fish I mean muskies. They seem to be, they seem to draw wolf packs of muskies in and out all day long, especially when you've got great conditions. I will find, um, and again, this is, be, and how do I know this, you might say, well, how, how would you even know if you have wolf packs of muskies coming in and out? I'll either, obviously, A, catch multiple fish on, you know, working, working a neck down, or uh, I will see fish on my, on my, on my sonar systems, okay? And um, 
oftentimes if I'm not getting muskies to follow, I'll see them on my side imaging and uh, and I will be, I'll be, you know, moving fish, moving fish, and all of a sudden they'll be gone. So I leave and I'll go fish other stuff. I'll go fish other, fish other structure and I will come back to this spot and a lot of times I'll come back and even on a, you know, whatever, whatever time it is, we don't need to get into moon, phase, moon phases right now, but I mean, sometimes there'll be nothing there again and I'll come back a third time and all of a sudden, boom, there's like four, five muskies. We'll get into that later when we do another whiteboard on, on electronics. But I will see sometimes and all of a sudden they'll just show up. And I and that's one of the beauties of, of neck downs and current is I think that they draw fish in, whether that's fish that are coming from like, uh, let's just say, uh, you know, downstream or something like that or whatever it might be upstream. It depends on some, some current systems flow upstream, some flow downstream, depending on what you talk about it, how, how you want to define it. But I do think that because of that water flow, they're very unique and that I think you're always going to have muskies pumping in and out of these areas. So that's just really important. It's one of the things, you know, it, it kind of probably falls under why to fish them. Um, but it's also a part of how to fish them because I think that one of the how-to's on a current area is just to always be attacking. Always be attacking these areas because I think they're always going to be holding fish. Current areas are just so amazing. Again, casting and trolling, um, I will, you know, nothing specific here as far as, of course, we talked about keying in on, on inside turns. Um, you know, classically, you're going you're gonna to have a fish right here. You're going to have a fish right here and occasionally on the point. But, you know, inside turns, and I, I will cast these perpendicular. And then one thing that I do want to, you know, talk about here, and this is just for whatever reason, um, it seems that for me, in, in, you know, just particular on neck down situations, I have a lot of success with parallel casting. I'm not sure if that's because fish are kind of in this, you know, these, these uh, main channel areas. I have a lot of success with casting and trolling neck downs, parallel casting, and then I would even open that to open, you know, basin casting. These are areas more so, and again, this is unique. If you're still, you know, if I haven't lost you on this vlog, you know, of course, you know, perpendicular, some more traditional angled casting on these structures with, you know, deadfall and whatnot. But one thing that I've had success with when it comes to neck downs is definitely veering out and really getting creative and really just not fearing casting open water. You know, really just, you know, and, and this is if you have two or three anglers in, in one boat or if you've got multiple boats working in an area, definitely have people casting off both sides. Definitely always have people casting off both sides. Uh, you know, again, we talked about this in the very beginning about, you know, muskies being drawn in from the basin area into this. I think there's a lot of muskies that are in the either in the basin and being drawn in. So they're not always on these tight areas. I, I just, again, I catch a lot of fish that are generally holding out. They're around, they're in the neck down, but they're not necessarily on those classic inside turns and things like that. They're out here. That's something really important that you want to kind of think about when you're casting or trolling is to really make sure you cover the mouth of these neck downs or channels. Super, super important. Other considerations. A question that uh, our friend John, who brought this actual vlog question in, um, do surface winds affect current areas like traditional spots? Um, in the last vlog, I showed a big um, underwater, you know, weed reef system pretty large reef that we drew in there. Um, and I would say, again, in my experience, wind surface currents, yes, do they help? Of course they help. But I think that when you have water flow, I am less, I, I am less likely to, to take into account as much as I would normally surface current and wind related currents again on the surface my you know my, my primary reason i'm coming to a neck down is because of of water flow um outside of the uh, outside of the wind I'm, I'm i'm here because of water flow so you know heavy wind or slack and this could be a great another great addition to our conversation you know when to go fish a current area when you have slack conditions when you have no very little environmental change. Go to an area of change. 
Go to an area of heavy, of, of, of change. It's a changing area. Okay, this is an important thing to think about. So, so no, I, you know, I think, I think wind and surface current is important, but when it comes to neck downs, I don't think it is as important as it is in a, on a more traditional spot. Um, again, and, and this is a real basic one here, but food, bait fish presence, important or not? Of course, food is important, but I will still fish a neck down, even if I don't see, if, even if I'm not seeing fish uh, like crazy on my sonar because I have such a respect for current areas. Um, I know there's fish there, even if I'm not seeing a lot of it on my electronics. I know that kind of you know runs um, counterintuitive to some of the things I've said about locating bait. Um, it's just one of those things that, that I have just a, a, um, a confidence in these neck down areas that I think it's because I, I've seen so many times wolf packs of muskies move into these areas. Whether bait's there or not at the moment, I think it's such a, I think this is a, a great word I'm going to throw at you here. It's a dynamic environment. And just because there's no bait present there at the moment doesn't mean you shouldn't spend 30 minutes or an hour fishing a spot like this because it's going to move in there at some point if it's not already there. So that's kind of an important thing. Um, and then lastly here is, is we, we just kind of end our kind of introductory neck down current talk is you know boat control and one of the biggest just things I, I wanted to say with regard to boat control is that if I'm working live bait you know eight times out of ten I'm probably going to try as much as possible depending on what the wind situation is to move with the current to be to to kind of in, in an attempt to and this can actually be I shouldn't just say, and this is, I'm glad I caught myself, this isn't always just about live bait presentation. This is also about casting presentation too. I mean, think of all the lures that we throw. A lot of you folks out there throw soft plastics and different glide baits. I love the glide raider, um, but even I need floating minnow baits, your shallow raiders and any kind of twitch baits that you want to suspend. I think that and, and I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed in a way that I didn't, I didn't bring this up earlier, but hey, we're here, we're talking about boat control. I think that when you have current, and if it's not overbearing, in many instances, especially on our flowages, when we can do this, allowing yourself to move with that current will oftentimes lead to a, a more natural presentation um, for your lures. And by that, I mean, again, so if you, if we're, let me just pull my boat here right on over here, pull the old recon over. If I'm, if I'm casting with the current, okay, I can generate slack in my line in those situations. Whereas if I am, if I'm going into the currents and I'm trying to generate slack, it's much more difficult. So I, my boat is being pushed backward by the current. It's tough to generate slack in my line if I if I need that for my presentation. Okay. Um, now you know if I'm, I'm slinging blades, maybe not as important. But anytime you're 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 using you're utilizing a tool, a lure um, that that utilizes slack, you're gonna you're gonna find that you're probably gonna have a much more natural presentation flowing or moving your boat with the current and adjusting as you go. So that's really important. Um, so yeah, and of course, I, I hope you have spot lock. You don't need spot lock, but if you catch a muskie and you're in a, in a heavy current area, spot lock is just absolutely incredible for keeping your boat off of uh, dangerous stuff and you can, uh, you know, release a muskie very, very, uh, you know, maybe much easier when you've got, you know, a tool like spot lock at your disposal. So. Anyway, folks, there you have it, our introductory video on, you know, neck down fishing, current fishing. I hope that this at least wets the palate, gets you started, and gets you thinking about current related muskies. Um, I can tell you this, uh, that in my, uh, my years of, of chasing muskies and guiding for muskies, uh, current fishing has become one of my more... Um, what, it's become one of my favorites, you know, not just because it's exciting and, and, and you know, it's, it's dynamic, but because we catch muskies doing it. You know, why, why would you not enjoy it uh, when you're catching muskies doing it? It's a lot of fun. So there you have it again. Check it out. Uh, as, I, as I always say, and I'll, I'll, wrap, I'll wrap up here with a couple things. First of all, if you've got comments 
or questions. I, you know, this was definitely a big kind of glance over on a very complicated topic. Uh, please leave those comments below. I'll try to answer them and maybe we'll do even another video if you'd like. Um, and, and again, just thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of the Muskie Mastery family. Um, I mentioned this in some earlier videos. We got a lot of really cool things to come in season six, which kind of debuts uh, in March. We're going to have uh, some new apparel available. We got an all new season of Muskie Mastery on a what what was you know a really really unique hunting season. We got some great content coming your way. Some great great um, learning segments, but also hopefully very very exciting. So so with that said again. Thank you so much for watching. Um, little shout out here to the Niles West and the Niles North um, chemistry and physics students. I absolutely love you guys. I know you've been you've been asking for a shout out in one of my uh, one of my vlog videos. There you go, uh, Niles West, Niles North. Um, you guys are absolutely the best. Uh, so so thank you thank you so much everybody for watching, and um, we will see you next time.